During the early hours of August 21, 1911, Vincenzo went to the Louvre Museum and lifted a painting off the wall. Almost at the exit, he found himself faced with the two problems. The door was closed and footsteps were approaching. Tucked under Vincenzo's hand was Leonardo da Vinci Mona Lisa. Currently, it is probably the most famous painting in the world. But how did it become so popular? Leonardo have started the portrait in 1503, at the request of a Florentine businessman who wanted a portrait of his wife, Lisa. Despite Leonardo's continued work on the painting for more than 10 years, it was incomplete when he died. In his lifetime, Leonardo performed groundbreaking research on human optics, which led him to pioneer certain artistic techniques. Mona Lisa contains some of these elements, a technique known as atmospheric perspective, allowed him to make images at a distance appear darkened, creating the illusion of depth. Is that enough to make the Mona Lisa the most famous painting in history? There are many factors beyond the canvas that contributed to the Mona Lisa's worldwide fame. King Francis, the first of France, owned and displayed Leonardo's painting after Leonardo's death. Then, in 1550, Italian scholar Giorgio Vasari published a popular biography of Leonardo. In this book, which was translated and distributed widely, the Mona Lisa was described as a hypnotic imitation of life. With time, the Mona Lisa became one of the most desired paintings in the French royal collection. Napoleon hung it in his bedroom. Then it was displayed in the Louvre Museum. The Mona Lisa was further hyped up by a series of European scholars in the 18th century, who focused primarily on her beauty. Mona Lisa's smile was described by Alfred Dumasnil as dangerous attraction in 1854. A year later, Theophile wrote of her mocking lips. Similarly, Walter Pater described the Mona Lisa as a feminine beauty masterpiece in 1869. By the turn of the 20th century, the portrait had become an iconic piece in one of the world's most famous museums. In spite of this, the Mona Lisa had yet to become a household name. The 1911 heist that Vincenzo pulled off gave it unprecedented fame. Vincenzo made protective cases for the Louvre Museum. And as such, roaming inside the museum was not entirely inconceivable. Fortunately for Vincenzo, a workman encountered him in the stairwell and helped him open the door and let him walk out into the morning. The theft made headlines around the world. A crowd gathered to view the empty frame where the Mona Lisa once hung. Despite Vincenzo's work at the Louvre Museum, the police never considered him a suspect. They also questioned Pablo Picasso, who had previously been involved in Louvre Museum theft but eventually let him go. During the next two years, Vincenzo kept the picture in a false bottom suitcase, then smuggled it into Italy and arranged to sell it to a Florentine art dealer. According to Vincenzo, he felt he was returning the work of an old master. However, rather than being lauded for his efforts, he was immediately arrested. After the mystery was solved, the Mona Lisa was exhibited to large crowds, and the story was covered by newspapers. During the following decades, conceptual artists such as Marcel Duchamp mocked it, Nazi art thieves went after it, and museums were attacked with rocks, paint, acid, and teacups. More than 500 years after creation, even the eyebrows and eyelashes of the Mona Lisa are long gone, but the case still protects it from bullets and earthquakes. Today, it stands less as an exemplary Renaissance portrait, and more as a testament to how we construct and preserve celebrity.